Hello and welcome. My name's Kathy A and heck, where in the heck have I been? Back on uh, September 11th, I was sitting down uh, at the train station, just taking an Uber there with my friend and we had our luggage and we were waiting on the platform for the train to come to take us. We were taking train to Reno, where my brother is. My brother is not well and uh, this is probably one of my last opportunities to see him. So it was really important. This trip was somewhat unexpected, but very necessary. So we're waiting on the train platform and my phone rings and it's Amtrak. And they said, well, I have bad news. We are canceling your reservation. There's an impending strike and if you change in Chicago, there won't be a train to take you to Reno from Chicago. So we were literally stranded. We had to call an Uber back to, uh, it was another $40 back to the house. And we made the decision to try to drive to Reno from Connecticut. <laughs> it's like 2,500 miles, 2,600 miles each way. Um, I used the GPS and uh, we started off, we put everything in the car, we decided just to, to go as quickly as possible so we wouldn't be too late. It took an extra day of driving than it would have by the train. Anyway, <laughs> we drove through some beautiful countryside. We went um, 80 west across, so we started in Connecticut, went up to uh, New York, went through Pennsylvania, went through Indiana, Illinois, Nebraska, um, Wyoming. <laughs> it was really quite a trip down and I was just so entranced by the vast space of the West and like it was beautiful and they had these prehistoric looking rocks and of course I had to stop at the side of the road and pick up a rock. <laughs> Anyway, um, we did get to see my brother, um, shockingly bad shape, and um, I'll just show you a couple pictures of my brother and me over the years, and you can see there's a slight difference. He had several strokes, uh, he had dementia, um, we had great conversations and then his wife said, so what year is it? And he said, oh, 1978, 79 is it? Or 78 still. And you know, I was thinking, gee, I sure wish it was 1978. <laughs> it's just quite a time. And it took extra time to get back. I missed working the first day I was supposed to be back to work. Uh, my boss was really cool about it. Um, but my first week back at work was this past week and it was just so busy. So here I am and I'm going to do my October phase and flop. So, hey, <laughs> I guess I, you know, I could start with some of the travel stuff I used. Um, <clears throat> one of the most convenient things I used were these one gallon storage bags that were sealable. And I I'm telling you. <laughs> We had, like, I had a bag here for first aid stuff. I had a bag for hygiene and stuff for the shower. Um, I had a um, makeup tools and accessories. And um, I had a mirror with this attached. Now this is a selfie light and it's really not meant to be used in a dark hotel room at 5.30 in the morning. Um, clipped on to a regular size mirror. It doesn't work as well. It is light, but um, this is the little elf selfie. And I don't know if you can see it. Oh, <laughs> souvenir of one of those cheap hotels. Um, yeah, you can see it maybe a little better that way. So. This takes a couple of batteries. This was really a nice way to light up the mirror. These things were in some of the hotels, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> and I found this really helpful. Using a face cloth with soap was, or using a face cloth even with my 
face cleaner was really a cool thing. I mean, I rediscovered face cloths or flannels, as you call them in the UK. And um, I, I really, I used my uh, makeup remover with this, rinsed it out. Then I used a uh, regular face wash with another face cloth and rinsed it off. Then I put my own face moisturizer on. So. Um, let me go through all the makeup here. And um, I want to show you something that really was a fail, though. This is the Echo Tools brush cleaner. And what it is, it's a, the inside of the cap is all bubbly and these are little sheets and they're like soap sheets so you stick them down there you add some water and then you rub your brush over it and it supposedly cleans your brush it does not clean very well and it dissolves and gets messy and it's gone after one brush so it wasn't very cost effective there's like 30 sheets in this little uh, square thing so I thought it was kind of a, a ripoff really I didn't like it at all it was just totally a, a ripoff. In the Dollar Tree, <laughs> this is a change purse. <laughs> they had a pug dog, they had this one, they had uh, a corgi, and I think they had a black lab, but I'm not sure. But they did have several different dogs. For $1.25, that's a change purse. It's just super adorable. Make a really cute stocking stuffer. I bought it for myself for my own stocking stuffer. I think it's so cute. I love. I, well, I'm a dog lover anyway, so I picked that up at Dollar Tree. Um, I want to talk about this because I put together a medicine cabinet because I don't have any storage in my bathroom whatsoever. They decided to make a medicine cabinet. Ordered the kit off of Amazon. It was really cheap, but it came as all these boards and you know wood pieces and stuff. It didn't look anything like a medicine cabinet. And it had like Phillips head screws that you had to screw with a screwdriver. And I said, forget that. Oh man, you know, I've, I've mangled my nails doing that sort of thing. Well, anyway, this is the Sint Pay. And if you go to the, the link that I click in, you will see, <laughs> you will see my video there demonstrating this. And this is the Sint Pay, and this is a little drill, and it comes with a charging cord, and it comes with this little packet of bits, which is kind of nice. The drill itself is pink, and I think it's great. So you just basically, when you turn it on, you push in, whether you're turning to the left or counterclockwise, or if you're turning to the right clockwise. And it lights up so you can see where you are drilling. Everything from uh, flat head screwdrivers to the, some, some kind of funky weird ones with the stars on them and the flat ones. So there are several wonderful, wonderful bits here. So it comes out easily here. So here's a flat head. And it just goes right in there and clicks. Okay, and then we're gonna put the reverse. Now I put together this entire medicine cabinet using this drill. It's got a lot of strength um, and a lot of support for um, what, what it is. I mean, it's a tiny little thing. It's very ergonomic. And it's got this cute little zippered case it comes in. Uh, charging took about two and a half hours for a full charge from like when I got it out of the package. So, um, and I used a uh, Phillips head bit on it. So I think it's awesome. I really do. This is one really great uh, little electric drill and it has a zippered case which opens and closes quite easily when you're not filming. <laughs> there we go. So uh, it does come in different colors. I thought the pink was kind of cute. 
And so I will use this for all my projects going forward. I totally recommend this. It's so cool. Um, it's a pink ergonomic drill. And it comes with, I think there's like 32 bits here. It comes in its own case, like 32 bits. And it lights up when you, okay, how it lights up. And you could turn it onto the other side if you want to um, go forward or clockwise. Push in this one counterclockwise. It has a charging cord with it. Very, very easy to use. It took about two and a half hours to um, charge it up. I love this. And you just leave it in the center position when you're not using it. Charge lasts over an hour and a half. And I was able to assemble a whole medicine cabinet uh, with one charge. So I was very grateful for that. This was a great gift. And it's so inexpensive. For hair. This is the um, Savani hair, hot hair comb. Now I already have like a Revlon one and I've used this to death. I mean, I absolutely love it. Now the um, Savani people sent me this one and this is the one I took on my trip and I tell you, it, it's got hot air. You can brush your hair into a shape. You can smooth your hair you can style your hair and dry it it's so convenient so nice and it's about twenty dollars less than the Revlon uh, hot air hair brush <laughs> so if anything ever happens to Revlon you know this is a great alternative and it's like twenty dollars less so I'll link this below I mean if you have never used a hot air brush you really should because it can make a huge difference in your hair. Quick video here. For eye primer, I was using the Rare Beauty uh, eye primer. It worked really, really well. My eye makeup stayed the same from morning till night. That was a combination of different factors, but it was really good, um, wonderful eye primer. It's not tinted so that it would dis hide discolorations at all. It didn't really do that, but it did hold my makeup on. It didn't crease, and uh, my makeup lasted all day, so it was great. This is the um, Lucas pawpaw and this is the ointment and this is something they recommended at my um, makeup academy that I'm going to and it's it's actually a lip treatment I did use it as lip treatment and I also do have some rough dry patches uh, of eczema on my body so I used it on that and that sure did help things um, really good for heels I mean it's just a really good all-around um, thick moisturizer Vaseline kind of consistency but it's made from the papaya uh, enzyme, so it's pretty good. For eye cream, I used my Clinique All About the Eyes eye cream. I think I've almost hit bottom pan here, but it was perfect for travel. It was just enough, you know, and I use it. It really does moisturize under your eyes prior to using any kind of color correctors or concealers. I really recommend using an eye cream, especially in this area and then out in this area because it really does help um, plump up your under eyes so that the concealers and stuff don't go into all the lines and get all cakey and everything. So it's a really good product from Clinique. Uh, Clinique has a Christmas offering that um, I'll talk about. Next week I'll be releasing uh, a video all about the Christmas releases that are out right now. <laughs> now there were two concealers I used and there's one that I did try before I left. I'll, I'll go over the one I tried before I left. I didn't bring it with me on the trip because I didn't like it. This is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. Now I did like, I like their foundation and a lot of folks on here talked about how wonderful the concealer was. Um, I'm inclined to disagree, but I have to say everybody's skin is a little different. And when somebody says they like a concealer, um, 
it's not always going to work for everybody. And, you know, initially I thought it was a little bit yellowy orange. The color I got was um, 10N Neutral. I've noticed with a lot of makeups lately, when you get a neutral shade, it's going yellow. It, it seems like uh, more of a warm tone than I'm comfortable with. I'm, as I'm getting older, I think I'm going more neutral and less warm. So these warmer tones are not my favorite. This didn't last very well. It did crease heavily underneath my eye. Um, I did powder it to set it, but I just don't think it was, it was worth it. I've, I've tried it uh, with several different combinations without eye cream under, with different eye creams um, on its own. I tried sponging it. I tried the thing where you spray the setting spray and on the sponge and you sponge after it. I mean, it stayed a long time that way, but I just, I don't think it was the greatest formulation compared to other uh, concealers that I'm using right now. I did like this one. This is the REM. Um, this is um, Ariana Grande's um, makeup line. And I think this concealer is outstanding. I have the uh, Light 7C in this shade. And I think I talked about it last month. It's still good. I did bring it with me on the trip, but I was using the other concealer more. So um, this worked really well. Um, it's a solid pot, so it's. I think it's better not so much. I don't like to dip my finger into that, but that's what I did to use this product. Um, but I think uh, the, the cap did come off a couple of times on the trip from being jostled around with everything else rubbing against it. So, uh, And this can dry up quickly if, if that happens. So um, I still like my other concealer better, and I'll talk about that next. Charlotte Tilbury. Yes. Okay, a little expensive. And um, I bought this in a physical... Sephora. They are just setting it out and this was maybe a month ago now. They didn't have any of the 4s or 4.5s or 5s left. They only had 3, which is 3 fair. And um, so I've got 3 fair and it's a little light, but it blends out nicely. The formulation on this is just outstanding. It's outstanding. And, you know, some people want to hate this, and they can't. <laughs> some, I think the price point really puts people off. And it, these are the same people that go and buy a Pat McGrath, you know, palette and don't think anything about $125. Then they're complaining about, you know, this costing $30, $40. So um, I like this. This is the uh, Radiance, Beautiful Skin Radiance Concealer. Uh, it is beautiful it holds stays all day and I know it stays all day because I drove sometimes 11 12 hours a day I was the only driver in the car the other person doesn't have a license so I was the only driver and I tell you through eye strain through you know trying to read signs and stress and everything else this stuff held up like a trooper I think it's outstanding um, probably my favorite concealer this year this is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. And I have the shade 3 Fair, but honestly, I think the 4 or the 4.5 would be a better match for me and not be quite so white. Although we're going into winter now and I'm going into my fish belly white state, it probably will be fine. Um, I think it's a wonderful concealer, absolutely wonderful. Ah, there's nothing else nicer I can say about this than I absolutely recommend it. Thumbs up all the way. And I paid my own cash money for this. The other concealer I brought with me is actually a color corrector called Bye Bye Redness. This is from It Cosmetics. This is an old friend of mine. It won best concealer type color corrector, I don't know, two, three years ago, maybe three years ago. This is a, and this comes in different shades, I think, but you can use this in instead of a concealer. It works really well. Um, it's very creamy and emollient. Any kind of redness, like I have redness on my chin, 
um, this takes it away. It absolutely is wonderful. I just put that on there now. Tap it in. It works marvelously. Uh, the shade I have, Porcelain Beige shade, which I believe is the lighter shade. I think they have three different shades, so there should be something for everybody in here. This is marvelous from It Cosmetics, and I don't buy too many things from It Cosmetics. But I like that. It's an old friend. I've used it for years, and I stopped because there were so many other things going on and out there available. You know, kid in a, camera, kid in a candy store. <laughs> I tried this before I left and I was looking for like something that could be all purpose for the trip that would cover kind of my sunscreen and my foundation without, you know, I wanted to take as little as possible because at the time we were packing for a train ride and I had limited luggage you could bring. And now that I had my car and I could drive, I mean, we filled the back seat with stuff. So <laughs> it was just, anyway, I did not bring this on the trip because there were a couple things about it. One was um, it oxidized really hard. This is the Dr. Jart BB Premium Beauty Balm. And it's a very, it smells like the Ola, uh, Ola Henriksen um, Tinted CC Cream. It smells almost exactly the same. They could very well be the same item. But it oxidized up just a little bit, went a little bit deeper, one shade deeper, a little bit warm. Um, I was suspicious of that, and also I didn't feel that it was working well with my makeup that I put over the top. Uh, so I left this behind on the trip. And I don't know, it's it, one and done kind of thing is fine, but I think in the winter I'm going to look too stupid, you know, with a kind of a tan. <laughs> So this is probably spring, summer kind of thing. Dr. Jart BB Cream, a lot of people recommend this. It's got a lot of healthy ingredients for your skin. Uh, I'm not going to go over all the details, but it does have a lot of healthy ingredients for your skin. But it's not really meant for somebody to wear as an alternative to foundation. If you're going out and you're using a lot of other makeup over the top, it doesn't work as well, uh, especially with powder products over the top. It, what I did use, and I walked the walk. I mean, Ulta had this on sale, so I bought two others. Uh, this is the Ulta Beauty Complexion Crush. Um, this is the foundation. I have cool light, medium cool light, and medium cool neutral. And the medium cool neutral tends to go a little peachy. Again, I, you know, these some of these makeups are going a little on the warm side. But this is a wonderful, wonderful, and I walk the walk. This is the only foundation I used on the trip. Um, absolutely wonderful. I didn't want to bring my other foundation that I'll talk about in a minute because I love it and I didn't want anything to happen to it because it was glass. So these are wonderful. Um, I brought the medium light neutral with me on the trip and that's all I used for foundation on the trip. House Labs. This is Lady Gaga's brand. This is a foundation um, that everybody's been talking about. This is the Tri Clones Skin Tech Foundation. Uh, it's got fermented arnica or something like that in it. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to do for your skin, but. <laughs> um, there were 51 shades, I believe, of this, but I went into a live Sephora, a store, and they were just setting them out. And it was maybe, I don't know, a month ago, month and a half ago, they were just setting them out. And I took the online test. There's an online test you can take. It asks you a bunch of questions about other makeup you use and whether you're light skin, what, you, what your concerns are, your dry skin, or this or that, this or that. They suggested I get shade 175. And I got 175 because on the, the actual Sephora, the website sold out of most of the light white girl shades, 
but 175 is still available. 160, I think, is probably my best bet, but it was sold out and they didn't have it on display. They only had like five shades on display in my Sephora locally to me, and 175 was one of them. And it had told me 175 was perfect for me, so I got it. really perfect color for me but dang this formula oh my goodness this formula I honestly feel this is going to be my foundation of the year and it's the wrong color <laughs> I, mean, I kind of like it a lot to want to say that about a foundation the formulation of this for aging skin now young people may or may not like this or may not want to pay it it, um, it goes over aging skin and wrinkles and smooths things out almost like wax and not in a bad way I'm not saying it in a bad way I'm just saying that this was marvelous this is the house labs foundation Try to get a sample if you can, if you go into Sephora. I am now a Rouge again for 2023. Thank you. I love it. House Labs, the foundation. I didn't like any of her stuff. Her first release, not at all. None of it. Not a single thing she released in her first series of makeup. But I love this, and I'm glad I gave it a chance. Uh, they had a special display in the Dollar Tree for these things. I think they had brows and they had um, they had brows and they had blushes. And the blush is beautiful. Uh, this is from Ioni, and this is one of the newer um, companies that they're dealing with. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still dealing with Marquins or not. Uh, or the you know some of the sister companies to Marquins at Dollar Tree because this is not the same. This is Baby Rose and it's quite pigmented. I was really surprised. Really, really nice for the Dollar Tree. Very pretty. Perfect for um, summer autumn. Perfect. Absolutely beautiful. It's a nice warm tone. Cute packaging. Baby Rose is the name of the shade, $1.25 at Dollar Tree. It's on a special display. It's not in with their regular stuff, so keep an eye out for this. Good quality. It lasts a long time. It blends nicely. Stays put. So that was a nice surprise. They also had the Ioni Perfect Brow. Um, it was okay. It's a little geared towards darker skin tones because the shades in here are... Uh, medium to deep tones. They're a thick powder, almost like a wet powder. And when you use your brow brush and you you know try to go through, and I am wearing it today. I do have it on my brows today. Um, really beautiful. And then you have this light shade that you can use, you know, to highlight under the brow. That's really nice. So I think the brow product also is a winning thing if you are um, medium to deep skinned especially. I think this is a wonderful brow product for you. A lot of palettes this month. I think I'll probably start with the big one. <laughs> you know back in the early 80s a lot of us watched this film called E.T. the Extraterrestrial and it starred um, a young man who finds this little creature who is left behind from a alien spaceship and he was waiting for them to come back and get him so in the meantime this kid brought him into the house and his little sister was portrayed by Drew Barrymore I think this was her one of her debut films she was only in I think she was in a TV film and something else I did a special on her when I did the flower beauty thing Anyway, as a little girl, she got this little creature, and <laughs> she dressed him up, and uh, she grew up, and she had her own beauty company called Flower Beauty. So this is one of the cutest um, special palette releases that there is out there, because she actually was the person in the film with E.T., now this reminds me so much of those Tarte palettes, I don't know if you can see that, but 
It's got blues and some very unusual colors, uh, duo chromes. So I think what I'm going to do is just show you one by one. They're very shimmery, shame on you Drew, because most of us can't wear that stuff. <laughs> the blue is awfully pretty, I really like the blue. Um, the purple comes off as a deep blue, which I found very unusual. Let me just put that there, I did one of them twice. Just I'm just the worst at swatches. <laughs> oh. Okay, we have a yellow one here. So we have a matte yellow and a matte bluish purple. Um, the pigmentation is really good. Um, I would say, All right, so one's repeated, but let me just show you. I'll do what Jen Phelps does. She turns her arm. <laughs> do the worst. I do the worst swatches. I'm so sorry. Now, I initially saw this, and it was in the CVS of all places. It is not on the website for Flower Beauty. She still has her Charlie's Angel special, which has that same circular motion, but has more wearable colors on it, by the way. This is something where some of these shades are special and I I don't know what to do here because you know they have a great staying power here. And let's see what we can do with this. Maybe put this here. I mean they're a great accent color palette but it's 20 bucks 20 bucks I thought that's an awful lot for this um, but the colors are beautiful especially the duo chromes and I'm really debating keeping this one because of that I think the colors are so unique but I could I, all I made was an ugly eye from this when I just used this and nothing else it was an ugly ass eye and it lasted all day <laughs> it was all big thank goodness I wasn't around anybody today, but um, I washed it off and I put something else on because I don't want to go through a video with that. It was very, very dark. I mean, if I was going out, maybe looking goth or something, I would probably really enjoy it. But individually, some of these shades are outstanding. Um, cute packaging, cute idea. I really love to support Drew Barrymore. I think she's a great person, but these are the colors listed on the back. Uh, you can find this in CVS. It's usually in one of those displays on its own. There was no lipstick with this collection or blush. Uh, they did have the three beam um, tubes of beaming stuff that kind of rival the Charlotte Tilbury wands. Um, and they had some kind of a spray, uh, face spray. But I am not going to be spraying micro glitter greenish purple stuff on my face. So the ET um, and Flower Beauty eye palette it's not a fail but it's not very functional so I'm you know <laughs> it dichotomy here so really cute and again one last look Let's see if you can Let's see it different ways maybe you can see <laughs> but the colors are extraordinarily unique that's all I can say about it. Something else new. Essence Beauty. You know I love Essence Beauty. I have these little ones from Essence Beauty that are like five bucks each. I love them. I love the formulation. And so when they came out with Roma and London and Hawaii and all these other places, I said I gotta get one of these. So I got London and Roma. Roma won. London was so poorly pigmented it was nothing like the formulation for these so they get them made somewhere else when they're larger like this definitely 
This one wasn't bad. It has a mirror on one side. Um, it's got an interesting assortment here. You've got, you know, a nice green, a light green. You've got a brown, gold, orange. This is very fall friendly. I think this has just got some beautiful colors. You've got your basic light color, um, transition color, deep color. For, so you can make a good basic eye and then you've got pops of green, orange. Um, even, you know, if you really want to do something exciting, you know, you've got that. I think this is a marvelous palette and it's not too bad uh, as far as the they're having a party next door. Can you hear them? Oh my god. I live in a condo building and there's like 65 condos here so there's always like something going on. <laughs> Just Anyway, of course I start filming and you know the whole crew comes out for a party. Um, I do like this. This was, I think, 10 bucks maybe. I think it's worth it. Um, the pigmentation, they're, t they're hard. They're hard in the pan, but you can, I scrape them a little bit with the edge of the uh, a brush handle. I like to take the brush handle on the end and just kind of scrape a little out and then go in and I get plenty of powder that way. Um, but I like these a lot. I think the shimmers are really pleasant. The mattes are nice and, um, you know, Essence makes some really good quality stuff. Really good. So this is a thumbs up from me. I think I, I think it's wonderful. Now, uh, speaking of Jen Phelps, she's always talking about how she loves this from uh, Ulta. This is the Ulta Beauty Everyday Faves uh, eye palette. Now, this is basic colors. You've got a nice big mirror there but it's got your basic colors in here. You've got light matte, you've got um, transition matte, you've got like deeper mattes, you've got mauve shades, you've got slightly warm shades, a couple of shimmers in here. You can do a shimmer for underneath the eye. It really does have pretty much everything you would need for a good solid first palette for a teen or if you're just getting back into makeup, this is a great little palette to get. It's around $20. Uh, Ulta has specials all the time. They have 350 off coupons, things like that. So this is a great thing uh, to pick up to have. It's a good, solid, um, fairly good quality eyeshadow palette. And there are uh, three or four different variants of this. This is the most basic one. Uh, this is the uh, Everyday Nudes, I believe it is. It doesn't say. It just says Everyday Faves. I guess, I guess it's just everyday phase. Maybe there's everyday rose or everyday blues or everyday purples or something. I don't know. I'll check on that and see what it is. This is everyday phase from Ulta Beauty. In, it's their own line. It's their own flavor. So um, I think it's excellent as well. So I appreciate Jen telling me about that. Now, once again, TJ Maxx has failed me. And I'll just show you real quick a picture of these swatch. This is the Morphe Ashley Strong um, Alignment Cake Liner Palette. Now this is not an eye palette. This is a cake liner palette. You're supposed to wet your liner brush and dip it into these colors. And the colors looked quite interesting, but they do not do not look good on the skin or on the eye. Absolutely horrible mess, hot mess. Um, even the black, everything looked like watercolor crayons. It just, and they dried so blah. And the light shade disappeared. It was just awful. It looked like somebody had scribbled with a colored pencil and um, somebody tried to erase it. That's how bad it was. This was terrible. And this is uh, Morphe again. I, I'm just not a, a fan of Morphe. I did buy the 35A palette from Morphe because they tempt you with those beautiful colors and those beautiful uh, pans of 150 shadows, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, maybe I should try it again. I'm never happy with Morphe shadows. I like the Jaclyn Hill. I like the James Charles. I can't think of anything else I liked from them. Maybe a couple of their lipsticks. Nothing else. Especially don't like their business. The way they conducted their business. So 
I don't want to support them, but I did buy that. So what did I bring for eye palettes on my trip? The first one, Charlotte Tilbury. This one I use probably the most. This is your basic, the Sophisticate. I used it pretty much almost every day. Um, just for a variety, I did have my Nude York palette from Rude Cosmetics. And Rude Cosmetics has blush, highlighter, and bronzer. And then they have an eyeshadow palette that's good basic. So I had this. I used this probably, you know, four or five of the days. I used these two as my only eyeshadow palettes for the entire two and a half weeks. I walk the walk, folks. I told you this is a good one. And I walk the walk. I use it. It's great. But this one did. This is Spotlight from You Can Be. And of course, I have bragged about my other You Can Be, the Exotic Colors. Exotic Flavors is the name of that one. Um, this is called Spotlight, and it's the perfect complement to Exotic Flavors. Uh, beautiful package here. It is a cardboard package. This is more of a rainbow package, but if you look across the top, you've got your neutrals, and you've got your purples, you've got your reds, you've got your greens, you've got your blues. So it's kind of an organized mess. I mean, I, I like, I could pick up different shades. Um, really, really pretty. And, you know, of course, exotic flavors is more of a basic palette, too. You get side by side. You've got all your colors of the rainbow, and they don't cross. I mean, there's, like, they're different. So I <laughs> really like them. Um, I really like, I've been using different colors as accents, and with school we have to get creative, so I've been making quite a mess on my face um, lately <laughs> to try to be inventive and creative as a makeup artist. So, um, working on it, working on it. Now, um, Ulta Beauty had their sale, so I did indeed get the Tartlet. Um, this is the tubing mascara from Tarte. Tarte. It's the Tartlet tubing mascara. I had this one, and I said they were going to have it on sale on that Thursday. I think it was near the, near the end of the uh, of the Ulta sale, the 21 days. So this was on sale, and I did pick it up. But I'm still working on this. I haven't opened this yet. Um, I do recommend this as a tubing mascara. It's absolutely wonderful. I did get this one at um, Blank. I mean, this used to be one of my favorites when tubing mascara was first being introduced. Uh, Thrive Cosmetics um, and this were, I think, two of the only tubing mascaras out there. This is the Blink uh, tubing mascara. They had this in uh, TJ Maxx for $5.99. I don't know why. I thought Blink was still making this. So um, again, it might be a packaging thing, it might be an overstock, it might be old. I don't know. It works just fine. I mean, it's a little bit clumpy. I still, I think I still prefer the Tartlet tubing mascara and I still prefer the Thrive Cosmetics. This one is a dark brown color. Um, so, you know, if you don't want to just be stuck with the black. So I think uh, tubing mascaras are the way to go, and that's all I brought with me on my trip was my Tartlet and my Thrive. I thought I'd run out of the Tartlet because it was a sample size, so I had to Thrive as backup, and I wound up using the Thrive. So, um, This is Sugar and Spice, and it was a really nice, um, natural-looking lip liner. I used that. As far as lipsticks, I brought two with me. I only had two lipsticks. Half of that was because I didn't want, you know, to ruin nice ones. I brought two. This is my Clinique. Um, this is the Melon Pop. Really pretty. I just... Feels very moisturizing on the lips and um, does have cute packaging. I love a lot of Clinique stuff and actually there is a Christmas set that I ordered from Clinique that has the black cherry in it. I couldn't believe it. Um, wonderful. The other lipstick that I used is this one. The, um, these are the, the color stories from Sephora 
and this is kind of an interesting shade. This is called Spark. It's number 68, and it's got kind of a It's pinky neutral, but it's got a little pizzazz to it, and I like that about it. Really pretty. So this is Spark from Sephora, and these are the Lip Stories series. Now they don't have a lot of longevity. I had to retouch this every couple of hours or anytime I had something to eat or drink, which was every couple of hours. And uh, I, I like that I brought this, though. I think it was good. Those were the only two lipsticks I had with me. I was worried about losing things or having them stolen or, you know, getting lost on the train or whatever. I'd like to talk about my nails for a minute. Now there's a couple in here that are shiny and a couple that are matte. Those are from the Daring Diva line at CVS and they are nail strips. Now Kiss has these really cute Halloween nail strips. And what nail strips are, very different from, you know, putting a nail on with glue or painting nail polish on your nails. Nail strips are actually specially treated layers of nail polish and they have been shaped to different finger sizes and you usually in these sets um, you get enough for two manicures. There's interesting and intricate designs, and then there's matte shades. Um, they're very comfortable to wear because they are actually nail polish, and they've been processed in a way so that you can just literally can just peel them off. You just peel this off. It's nail polish. And you just hold it onto your nail wrap it to the sides, wrap it forward, fold it down, and then you take a nail file, okay, and you can just file that down, take off the excess, and if you're smart you can use this on another nail. <laughs> Stick it back on the packaging here. Fold it over, it's extremely comfortable to wear. It's very durable. Now, a few years ago, I did a video with a friend of mine who sold these under the name of Color Street. Color Street was, I think, the first to come out with it. And unfortunately, as happens with a lot of things, it got copied. You could find them on Amazon. You could find like 20 sets for $5. You can find them in CVS from the Kiss Company. These are $4 a set. And they're really cute and they've got designs on them. Now as opposed to painting your nails, which you would think would be the easiest thing, with me painting my nails, especially when I'm painting my right hand, I get it all in the nail bed, it's uneven, and then I suddenly start doing projects. I start reconstructing my house after I do my nails. For some reason I start getting busy Silly things like if you have to go to the bathroom and unzip something or you go into the kitchen you pull out silverware or you stir something and you tap against it, then your nail polish gets ruined. Now these are instantly dry. It's dry. I can do anything with this. And they're comfortable to wear as, you know, these kind of nails are not comfortable to wear. You glue these nails on and, you know, they look beautiful. They look fabulous, but they pop right off and then you've got all kinds of nail problems from the glue that you use. I mean I use all kinds of different glues. I have actually super glue that I use with my fake nails. Um, they're beautiful but I mean there's a price for that. So these Color Street nails ran about $14 for the two sets. The two manicures comes with the nail file and, and all that stuff. Um, Color Street is turning into the new Mary Kay, and unfortunately a lot of people are falling into that black hole. I remember when I first started on YouTube and I was selling Mary Kay, um, they encouraged me to buy a lot so I could resell it at a higher price, and I would make all kinds of money and new friends and blah blah blah. That didn't happen. Uh, they're doing the same thing now with Color Street. They're broadening their range from nail strips to makeup 
lipsticks, foundation. Um, I have a couple of friends on here who sell Color Street. I don't know if they actually really do sell it. They want to sell it and they show it off and they say, well, go to my website and you can buy it there. Unfortunately, Color Street's very expensive compared to like if you go on Amazon. The risk you take by getting these cheapy sets off of Amazon is a lot of them are sized for children. So you may get enough to cover these three fingers, but then when you get to your index and your thumb, there's nothing big enough and you actually have to put two side by side because they're too small. So, you know, sometimes Amazon isn't always the best deal. But, um, you know, and I hate to kind of throw shade at Color Street, but they're very expensive. They get people to buy a lot of inventory and then they can't move it. And right now, like, at the display at CBS, they had these two Halloween ones. Really cute. So, I mean, what's a girl to do? I'd love to support my friends. I'd love to, you know, help them with their endeavors, but I can't get <clears throat> I can't get wrapped around this whole color street thing. It's it is high quality. The nails look great. These are from Amazon. And Daring Diva, um, the, the shiny ones are from Daring Diva, the little shiny, strippy ones. And then these are Kiss ones, you know, and they're gorgeous. The only reason that I wouldn't paint my nails as opposed to this is that the designs, intricate designs and things, you can't repeat this kind of thing yourself, you know, drawing it on there, it's really hard. So. You'd have to pay somebody a lot of money to do this kind of paint work. And you just buy these for like four bucks at CVS, so why not? They're comfortable, they last about a week. I totally recommend them. Um, Color Street is good, but I don't think it's as good as a bargain. And Amazon does carry these, but you have to be careful and look carefully at the sizes and that you're not getting children's stuff. So that's my little spiel on nails. When I came back from my trip, um, I finally did go to get that oil change and one of the creepiest things that I saw is the man went behind my glove compartment in the car and he said this is your cabin filter and he pulled it out and he went oh and there was all kinds of seeds and chew marks all over it he said they will urinate in it they will chew on that for nesting material and they will come back and then they'll start chewing on the wires and other parts of your car you don't want mice in here so i replaced the air filter with a brand new one and i did this process i opened up the glove compartment and right behind it is where that air filter is located you stick a bounce and he said bounce you stick a bounce dryer sheet in there. They don't like that smell. They won't come. They won't be attracted. Even if they've urinated somewhere in the car, they will not come into the car with that smell. So I'm just going to do a quick video here to show you how to keep mice out of your car. <laughs> And they like in garages it doesn't matter if you're in a garage or outside you probably have more access outside but but mice are in your garage if they get in your garage they'll go up into your car so um, this is my little life hack my other life hack is a washing machine um, 
I had I'm in a condo building and they have a community washing machine on each floor but I again you heard my neighbors <laughs> I don't want to share a washing machine on it I'm kind of creeped out by sharing washing machines. I know it's a germ thing or whatever, but so I got these little portable washing machines to just when I come home from work, just throw my clothes in there, wash them, spin them, and hang them up. And this little machine is a wonderful purchase. Landed in my kitchen here. This is the washing machine side bucket here. This is the drain hose which drains in here. It's not a lot of space here. This is very short. It has a clip up top so you just clip that right there which is kind of nice. The dials are very simple. We have um, this is the hose attachment if you want to um, fill it from the sink. You can attach one end to the sink and the other end here. It fills it very slowly. This one is a timer for the washing machine. It can do three, six, nine, or 12 or 15 minutes of washing. Then we have, um, but this is for the, um, if you want it on the standard or if you want to use the spinner, which is on this side. Open that up. This is the washer. It's larger than you expect, but still small. And then this is the spinner. This holds about half of what's in the washer. So half of your load can go in here to spin. And this works really nicely. All right, so we're gonna start our laundry. And instead of filling the tub of the hose, because the water comes through here, comes through a pipe here, that connects right up here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the easy way, which is just to take a it fills a lot faster that way. So I'm going to put the detergent in about halfway and then I'm going to put the clothes in. Now I've got it about halfway here and they have this ridge right here. This is the the mark for really small load like for intimates or something like that and then you can go right up to almost to the top but I fill it about halfway which is about three of these and then I'll add my detergent which is my Tide here okay and now that I've got the detergent in here I am going to add a load of clothes now we have, um, let's see, there's a, a nightgown. A pair of jeans. A couple of undies. Socks, a pair of socks. And then I have a towel. Now I'm going to add water to go over the top of that. Okay, and I've got gloves on. I'm just going to zhuzh this around a little bit to make sure everything is coated in the water. And then I'm going to close the lid. And now this dial is kind of hard to read, but it says standard and spin here. And this is the timer. So I have it on standard, which is standard wash, and I'm going to move this to uh, between six and nine minutes. So that's going to it's going to go for about uh, seven minutes. Now this, this 
thing is connected so low on here that you have to have the machine raised. So I actually used the packaging it came in to set it on. Draining is definitely a drag. I'm just going to show you the floor is a little wet from this. Um, but, you know, we drained out a lot of the water from here. So now we're going to use the spinner. And we're going to take out these items and loosely put them in the spinner. I'm just going to put the, um, the nightgown, the undies, the socks in the spinner. Okay, that's what fits. We'll try the jeans in the next one, but I'm not sure we're going to have very much luck. All right, now we're going to doesn't work when you've got it uh, open. Pretty good spin. Now they recommend uh, one to three minutes for most things, but They're very, uh, they're damp, and they're ready to hang. One thing um, I noticed was that this does not have a rinse cycle per se, so if you want to rinse your clothes, not just, you know, spin them, uh, you actually have to drain the water out and then add fresh water and then just do a um, short wash for just a couple minutes and that will take care of um, getting most of the uh, rinsing, most of the detergent off. Now what I do is I'll just in the sink, rinse them in the sink, uh, wring them out as best as I can and then put them in the spinner and let that take care of the um, excess. So we'll try the jeans. I don't know if they're gonna work because they are so heavy. Let's see what happens. going to hang these things up and they will dry overnight. On a side note, you do need an extension cord because this cord is too short to fit from this if it's on the floor into any um, electrical sock. So to recap, we have a nightgown, a dish towel, a short shirt, of blue jeans and we've got some undies a bra socks and that was our laundry uh, but it does a good small load of clothes I mean you can do a couple pairs of work pants a couple of blouses some underwear some socks uh, maybe a hand towel in one load um, it didn't work well with my blue jeans because they got too heavy and it, the agitator wouldn't agitate because the heaviness of the jeans weighted them down because it was they were wet. So um, that's the only thing is um, I hand washed my jeans in the sink, wrung them out, and I stuck them in the spinner part and that spun the excess water out so my jeans still dried overnight. One last fail, um, I forget who I was watching and I, I actually hate to say who I watched when I don't like something because it's almost like I'm throwing shade at them and I don't want to because I love everybody I watch. <laughs> I'm subscribed to a lot of YouTubers so when they say they love something, I'm on it, you know? And uh, this thing was an Amazon purchase, it was called Farmhouse Fresh 
body oil and it came in different scents and she said the vanilla bourbon was out of this world she loved it she was so happy that it was available it's so inexpensive so I ordered it no just no it's really strong um, it didn't smell like vanilla it didn't smell like bourbon it just smelled like pong so I and I didn't get a bad one I got the same kind she said brand new <laughs> no really bad oh my gosh so okay so I think that's pretty much it for October faves and flops is quite a mouthful here this this month I know my videos are a little long but um, they're sincere <laughs> it's been quite a month I hope all of you are having a wonderful week and have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.